The first station, Jesus is condemned to die. Beaten and weary, Jesus is brought before a judge. The crowd is asked to choose who will be saved. The name Barabbas rings out. Innocent Jesus is condemned to death, betrayed by those who claim to love him. The Roman prefect of Judea, Pontius Pilate, washes his hands of guilt, and in so doing, washes his hands of Jesus, evading the truth of his guilt means rejecting Jesus. The second station, Jesus carries the cross. Jesus accepts his cross, knowing fully the hour to come. He takes upon his burden and bleeding shoulders the weight of all our sins. He will shoulder all our pains. All around us, people are carrying heavy burdens. Some of these burdens we know about, but we ignore them. We allow ourselves to be deaf and blind to the pain of others. The third station, Jesus falls the first time. Soon after taking up the cross, Jesus falls. So early in the way, he is on the ground, face down in the dust, the nearly overwhelming impact of the hideous crashes of sin, the evil placing down makes Jesus stumble. All the while, the crowd mocks and delights him. The fourth station. Jesus meets his sorrowful mother. Jesus meets his mother on the way. For a mother to see her son so wretched devastates her heart and he yearns for her consolation. She who carried him in her womb, she who looked with joy upon the infant child at Bethlehem, she who fed him, taught him, worried over him, and journeyed with him, is now helpless to save him, and yet is granted the power to relieve his suffering merely by her presence. She supports him in his way of the cross and shares in his anguish. She stands by in love and constant prayer, never yielding to hatred for those who are standing away from him. She understands the need for love and its redemptive power, especially when faced with the cruelest evil. The fifth station, Simon helps Jesus carry the cross. Jesus allows Simon to assist him in carrying the cross. Simon is reluctant, initially refusing. Would people think he was a criminal too? How foolish of him and us to reject this invitation. Was there even a moment when Simon forgot his own discomfort and looked with compassion at Jesus? The sixth station. Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. Veronica sees Jesus' need and offers to wipe the blood and sweat from his face. She didn't stop to think about the consequences or to measure her own needs. At that moment, she thought only about the needs of Jesus. In such a little and tender way, she reflects his kindness and courage. Stepping out from the crowd, she risks jeers and public contempt, and thereby obtains the only approval that counts. From this small act comes the greatest blessing. She is given his image because she reflects him in her kindness. The seventh station, Jesus falls for the second time. All day we are concerned about what our friends will think, and we work hard to look good in their eyes. But sometimes they fail us. They don't stand by us when we need them, in spite of all our efforts to please them. When Jesus fell again, where were his friends? Why did even one of them step forward on his behalf? 
Was he angry or hurt by their actions? What was he thinking as he clung to the ground for the second time? The eighth station. Jesus faced the weeping women of Jerusalem. The women weeping for Jesus, they do not realize that their own guilt is more deserving of tears. While Jesus' body is wrapped by pain, their cries hide the deadly arguments of sin stained souls. We weep because we think a man is dying to this life. But Jesus tells us to weep for those who lose eternal life by separating themselves from him. The ninth station. Jesus falls for the third time. Taunted mercilessly by temptations to turn away from his mission and weakened by the fatigue of constant pain, Jesus once again stumbles into the rocky dirt, all while bearing the stairs, insults, and profanities of a blaspheming crowd. All those people watching, what were they thinking? Jesus had helped so many of them, but now not one of them had the courage to come forward. They were they frightened of the soldiers and angry crowd? Or was it simply that Jesus was no longer one of them, and so they left him for the 10th station? Jesus is stripped off his clothing. When they came to a place called Golgo, the soldiers cast lots and divided his garments. His robe is sold like a carnival prize, a souvenir of execution. The soldiers leave him nothing. They place over his head the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. The eleventh station, Jesus is nailed to the cross. Wounded, mangled, made to bleed, he consents to the violent attack of the, the hammer. Patient in his agony, he allows the nails to enter his body. Jesus becomes one with the cross, absorbing completely the burden of sin, allowing it to penetrate him. All the rage and loneliness and anxiety and despair and hatred and lust and greed and incessant lies of all mankind through all the ages, sinking into him, filling him up. Jesus is bombarded with poison and still he loves us. The twelfth station, Jesus dies on the cross. From noon onward, darkness came over the whole land. Jesus hangs on a cross with, with but a few faithful at his feet. Even captured on a cross and expiring from the torture, there is no mercy for him, yet he pleads for mercy for us. And in his passion, without solace, in the midst of the crowd, he is a man utterly alone. At this moment, filled with all the despair of every human heart, he tears the veil between man and God and plunges into the total hell of sin to purge it for us. It is the final acceptance of death. Jesus cries out again in a loud voice and gives up his spirit. The veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth quaked, rocks were split. The centurion and the men with him who were keeping watch over Jesus feared greatly when they saw the earthquake and all that was happening, and they said, Truly, this was the Son of God. The thirteenth station. Jesus is taken down from the cross. As Jesus' body is given to his mother, she cleans it lovingly and wipes away the signs of evil inflicted upon it. The fourteenth station. Jesus is laid in the tomb. Jesus' body is carried to the, to the borrowed tomb. Jesus spent his 
his public life preaching, healing, and helping others. He promised good things to those who followed him, but here he was, dead from crucifixion. At this moment of sorrow and failure, his followers had abandoned him. Here is a man who was born in an obscure village, the child of a peasant woman. He grew up in another village. He worked in a carpenter shop until he was 30. Then for three years, he was an itinerant preacher. He never owned a home. He never wrote a book. He never held an office. He never had a family. He never went to college. He never traveled 200 miles from the place he was born. He never did one of the things that usually accompany greatness. He had no credentials but himself. While still a young man, the tide of popular opinion turned against him. His friends ran away. One of them denied him. He was turned over to his enemies. He went through the mockery of a trial. He was nailed upon a cross between two thieves. He was buried in a borrowed grave. Two thousand years have come and gone, and today he is the centerpiece of the human race and leader of our of all the armies that ever marched, of all the navies that ever sailed, all the parliaments that ever sat, and all the kings that ever reigned, put together, have not affected the life of man upon this earth as so powerfully as has that one solitary life. <laughs>